my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul. thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art when through the woods and forest glades i wander and hear the trees when I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God, his Son, not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the My soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come shout of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God how great thou art then sings my soul my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Oh, amen and amen. What a great God we walk with and what a great God we serve and what an adventure in faith it is each and every day to walk with him. Welcome. It is a joy and delight to be together in God's house to gather around his word and allow him to speak to our lives, to just walk into his presence and tell him how much we love him and bask in the love that he has for us. Man, does it get any gooder than that? I don't think so. I don't think so. Hey, listen to what the apostle writes to the Hebrews in the epistle to the Hebrews. He says this, he says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And if you want to draw near God, you got to dare to believe that he is and that he rewards. We're going to begin a journey on uh, a study of faith uh, this, this morning, so uh, let's pray that God would speak to our lives. Let's commit our morning to him.
God, you're a great God. You're mighty and good in everything you do. And God, we are in awe of who you are, of what you do, and how you work in our world and in our midst. God, we love you. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for mercies fresh every morning. We thank you, God, for your long suffering that, uh, that you put up with us, God. We, we love you, God. And God, as we gather here, we gather longing to know you and longing to draw near to you and longing to experience your presence and your touch in our lives. So God, it's our prayer that you would take charge of every element of our shared time together here today. That God, you would open our hearts to one another in fellowship, that our fellowship might encourage us in our walk with you. That God, you would, you would move in our midst and whisper in our, in our spirit the, the wonder of your truth and word uh, through the ministry of your Holy Spirit, that your Holy Spirit would have free reign in each of our lives, that God, we might hear from you. And then, Father, it's our prayer. We understand this, that in our own strength, we cannot. We cannot follow. We cannot do anything in our own strength. God, we need your strength to be true and genuine followers, to be servants who bring glory to your name. Father, we seek you. We long to draw near to you. We dare to believe that you are. And we dare to believe that, God, you will meet those who will dare to draw near. And we're trusting, trusting that today and asking your move in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, you may be seated as can we continue to worship together. I'm so thankful for his amazing grace. And he is worthy of our worship and praise. Let's sing our hymns together. Worthy of worship, worthy of praise, worthy of honor and glory, worthy of all the glad songs we can sing, worthy of all of the offerings we bring. You are worthy, Father, Creator, you are worthy. love and devotion, worthy of bowing and bending of knees, worthy of all this and added to these, you are worthy, Father, Creator, you are worthy, Savior, Sustainer, you are worthy. Father, Master, and Lord, King of all kings and Redeemer, wonderful Counselor, Comforter, Friend, Savior, and Source of our life without end. You are worthy, Father, Creator, you are worthy. sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. Through many dangers, toil, and snares, I have is 
look at God's amazing grace it's amazing he he gives us the grace but he knows us so well so well he knows our name he knows each hair on our head he knows all about us and we just want to give him the worship and praise he has deserved so let's stand together let's honor him and sing today he knows my name I have a maker, he formed my heart, before even time began, my life was in his hands, he knows my name, he knows my every thought. falls and hears me when I call. I have a father, he calls me his own. He'll never leave me, no matter where I go. of that again. I'm hard-headed, so sorry. We're going to sing that song all the way through again, because I want to just give him our worship and praise, but I want to remind myself of how awesome God is. So let's sing that one more time. I have a maker. <laughs> I have a maker. He formed my heart. Before even time began, my life was in his hands. He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls and hears me when I call. I have a father calls me his own. He'll never leave me, no matter where I go. He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls and he me when I call. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. Our boys and girls are going to stay with us this morning. No children's worship. Well, let me invite you this morning to turn with me to the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 12. Genesis, Genesis chapter 12, as we come to uh, the book of beginnings, the book of beginnings, Genesis, Genesis chapter 12. 
Uh, I come with uh, a little bit of a heavy heart. Uh, I, I've, I've, uh, I have struggled just a, just a skosh because uh, uh, I so thoroughly enjoyed studying in 1 Thessalonians. Uh, man, uh, the, uh, the, the just practical things that God spoke into my life about, about how, how to conduct community life and uh, uh, the challenge of how to do that and how to do that in an encouraging way it was uh, a huge blessing to me. And I, I hope by overflow you got some kind of blessing out of it. But I was greatly challenged. I enjoyed it so thoroughly. And so, uh, so I, I, I uh, am a little sorrowful when I come to the conclusion of that study on First Thessalonians. I had been praying about God, where, what next? Where, where do we need to go? And uh, I began to reflect on uh, a few things in, in life. And you know, there, there are mile markers in life and significant moments in life that, uh, that we cherish and value, that we look forward to, that we, uh, we set our sights on. Do you remember, do you remember waiting to get your driver's license. Do you remember? Now, some of you don't remember that, uh, but uh, because some of you drove before you had a driver's license. But, 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 but uh, I, I remember looking forward to being 16 and uh, being legal, and that was going to be incredible and have my driver's license. You know, today as I look at that, <clears throat> I don't know that that was one of the more significant moments in my life. I thought when I finally got done with education, I was so tired of school. I can't tell you how tired of school I was when I finally got done with school. I cannot tell you how done I was before I got done. And I thought that would be a mile marker that I would just, uh, just cherish and celebrate and live on and, and, and celebrate the anniversary of the rest of my life. And uh, not so much. Not so much. There are a lot of different... Things or moments or targets in our life that we think are going to be, boy, that is going to be the deal. That is going to be, that is going to be something. I thought when I turned 30, I would have a sudden dose of smart. Because when you're 30, you're smart. I find <clears throat> not so much. Not so much. There are things that we look at and we think those are going to be significant, th significant moments, significant markers in our life. But do you know, as I look back on my life and as I look at uh, where my life is and where I'm going and what, what's going on in my world, you know the things that I look back at and I think, man, oh man, I, I'm, I'm planting, a, I'm planting a, a flag there. I'm planting a stake there. And that, that is significant. Those are, those are, and, and those moments all have to do with moments I stepped out and trusted God. And I look back at those moments and I cherish them and they bring celebration to my, to my life and they brought formative moments in my life and they altered the direction of my life. And I look back at those moments where I decided, wow, I don't know, I'll just have to trust God. And those are the things I cherish and those are the things I value. So, if that's what really matters, how do we begin, how do we become men and women of faith? How do we become people who walk in faith, step out in faith, and, and dare to see God accomplish the impossible in our, in, our, in our journey, in our lives? Well, I don't know where to go better than that than to study the father of the faith. And so we're going to spend some time looking at the life of Abraham and we're going to look at some faith lessons out of the life of Abraham. And this morning we come to the beginning of that faith journey in chapter 12 to see how we begin a faith journey with him. Follow along with me beginning in verse 1. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and in him, and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. And Abram took Sarah his wife and Lot his brother's son and all their possessions that they had gathered and the people that they had acquired in Haran and they set out to go to the land of Canaan. 
When they came to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land of the place at Shechem to the oak of Morah. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there he moved to the hill country on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed on, still going toward the Negev. Here is the beginning of that faith journey. Here is the beginning of the father of the faithful uh, beginning and setting out on that journey. And what is involved in setting out on a journey? What, how, how do we find a faith journey? How do we begin a faith journey? And here in this text of scripture, this is what Abram experienced. He experienced a call from God and he practiced a step of faith. And if you're going to begin a, a, a faith journey, you've got to hear from God so that you can take a step of faith and you are off. And we're going to talk about some, uh, some hazards on on that journey, but, but here this morning I want to talk about uh, we, when you get a call from God and you take a step of faith, you've begun a faith journey. First of all, let's look at the call of God that came to Abram here in our text. Abram is 75 years old, 75 years old. Now, a few of us have a few years on Abram, but whew, man, am I glad he's got a few years on me. Wow. <sighs> He's 75 years old. He's happily married. He's as well established. He's loved by his employees. He is wealthy. He has a place of position, a uh, 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 situation in which he, is, uh, which he is established and comfortable. And all of a sudden, he hears a call from God. He is called by God. Now, that's a special call when you get a call from God. God called to Abram. God called. That's a special call. Uh, every once in a while when our office manager's away, I pick up the phone. Uh, I try not to do that very often, uh, but I, I do do that. And invariably, when I have the privilege of picking up a phone, it is ever and always a salesman. They, they are just crushed when uh, they are thrilled when they hear that they are talking to Paul. Uh, you, you're Paul, and, uh, and, because you know it's a privilege. <laughs> no, because they think I'm in charge. <laughs> <laughs> Little do they know that I'm not in charge of anything. I always have to tell them, oh, our office manager's in charge of that. You'll have to talk to her. She's unavailable right now. <laughs> a few years ago, I got a call from a sales, sales person. I didn't know it was a sales person. Is this Paul McKim? Yes. Do you still pastor at Lower Street Baptist Church? Yes, thank you very much. And then in about a week, we got a bill for appearing in the yellow pages of Rockport. They said, Pastor uh, uh, agreed. I said, yes, that's my name. That's a green. I received a call this week, or last week, uh, I received a call from some, some kind of direct TV thing. I don't know what kind of, some kind of TV thing. And they're having a special offer. And, and it's like, we have television services. We don't have television services here at church, you know. And, and so, so, uh, so they're, they're launching into the spill and spiel, and I, I keep trying to kind of pull them off because I don't want to be rude. I, you know, <clears throat> I can be, but I don't want to be. Uh, so I don't, I don't want to just be rude. So I, I say, um, uh, I, I'm sorry, we have, uh, we have no services here. We do not want wish any services here. Oh, and the moment they heard my voice, they said, so glad to hear from you, and they transferred me. And I thought, you're just seeing if you got a live body. <clears throat> and I did hang up. And we'll probably get a bill for direct TV services here in a few weeks because I said I'm breathing. Some calls are not welcome. But a call from God? God spoke. It's a holy thing when God speaks. It's an incredible thing for the hungry soul when God speaks. And God spoke to Abram. 
that call came with great power and promise. In fact, there are seven promises he makes here when he calls Abram. Seven promises. Seven. He says, I'm going to make you a great nation. I, I, I'll bless you. I'm going to make your name great. Uh, you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. All peoples of the earth will be blessed through you. He gives him a sevenfold blessing in, in this call here in these first two or three verses as he speaks to Abram and calls him. It's a special call because it comes from God. It's a special call call because it comes with power and promise. It's a special call because it comes to Abram. It was to, in Abram's vernacular, it was to me. In our experience, it would be to us, to me. God would speak and God would establish purpose and, and stamp our life and with, the, with, with, with value and significance because God would call in our lives. It's an incredible thing to be singled out by the creator of the universe and invited to walk a journey with him. But that's what the invitation to faith is. To walk with God into the great unknown and see the hand of God where we've never seen it before. It's an incredible thing. It makes us feel incredibly significant and incredibly precious. I, uh, I'm trying to clean up my office some, and so I, I've been going through and throwing, throwing stuff away and saving stuff and doing things like that, you know. And so I'm, I'm piling through scraps of notes I've piled and said, I'm going to get to that someday, and I've, I've been going through scraps in my office for a while. And I ran across a scrap just this week. It was a scrap where I'd scrib scribbled a note of when Josh was four or five years of age, so you know how long ago that was. Uh, six or eight years ago now. <laughs> no, like 30 or more. On that scrap, scrap of note, I, I wrote something Josh had said. He said this. He said, you are the most wonderfulest daddy I ever had. <laughs> now I realize I'm the only daddy he ever had. But it didn't diminish the thrill. Called by God. That's a special call. Called by God. It brings power and promise. Called by God. Whoo! What a thrill. Called. He's called to a specific place and a specific task. God says, Abram, I want you to go to a land that I'm going to show you. I want you to go to a land that I'm going to show you. And he gave him a destiny. I'm going to make you a great nation. I, I want to invite you on this incredible faith journey. And that's exactly what God is has in store for every one of his children. God has numbered our steps. God has ordained our steps before we were ever born. God knew every one of our steps. He ordained every one of our steps. He is excited about what he is, what he is woven into the fabric of who you are and what, what he has made you to be. He's excited about the steps he has in anticipation for you to walk. And we have a call from God. So if we each and every one have a call from God, what's involved in the faith journey? There has to be a step, a step of faith. That's exactly what Abram had to experience here at 75 years of age. He had to, had to step out and take a step of faith. Abram began this journey sometime before. He had originally lived in Ur of the Chaldees and he had moved part way toward Cana. he, Canaan. He had moved and settled at Haran. And there God had flourished and blessed in his journey. But that was partial obedience. And God spoke again and said, I want you to go to the land I'm going to show you. His call came and asked Abram to leave everything, everything, and to trust he was to leave his country. He was to leave his relatives. He was to leave his father's home and follow. 
He was to leave those things that were dear to him. He was to leave those things that were dearer to him. He was to leave those things that are dearest to him and follow. He was to leave the place he knew. He was to leave the people he knew. He was to leave the security he cherished. He was to, to follow God into the unknown and unseen. God said, follow me, and we're going to step through this door uh, of, of, of impossibility. And, and when we step through this door of impossibility, you're going to see the supernatural, Abram. You're going to see a, a amazing, and that's exactly what faith is. It is a step through something that we think is impossible, where we see the incredible provision of God. Now, think about it a minute. God is speaking to a man who's 75, whose wife is 65, and says, hey, Come go with me, and you are going to have a child. And you are going to be a great nation. And I'm going to show you things. That's impossible. But nothing is impossible with God. Hebrews uh, chapter 11 tells us that Abraham went looking for a city whose builder and architect was God. He went looking for a city whose builder and architect was God. He went looking for something bigger than, than the tangible of his day. And, and in our faith journey, that's exactly what we've got to be on the journey of. Something that's bigger and more tangible than, than the everyday. Because we live in a mundane everyday world. Every day, you got more utility bills. Every day, Every day, you got more trash to pick up at the house. Every day, all right? Every day. And if you're not careful, you're captured in that every day. But every day, God has an opportunity to invite us to an incredible journey of faith. And if we'll step out in what light we have and follow Him, it's amazing what we will see that God can accomplish if we pursue a building whose architect and maker is God. Abraham went witnessing. Uh, in this journey, he took along Sarah. Uh, she uh, evidently was agreeable. He took along Lot, his nephew. I'm going to tell you, he must have talked about it enough that his nephew said, man, that sounds like a pretty incredible journey. I think I'll go. Uh, he went witnessing. He went walking, not knowing. Every journey of faith demands a step. Uh, if we are faith, to be faith means we step into what light we have and trust God to give light for the next step. I have never seen in my life and I have never read any of the great saints of God who understood and had a blueprint of everything laid out before them for their whole entirety of life and they could just walk there and see the incredible hand of God. Everybody I read and every experience I've had is this. God says, I want you to be faithful here. I want you to do this. And he gives me about this much light. I got about this much. I, I know... I know where I'm stepping this much, and God says, step this much, Paul. And when you get there, you got that much more light. This is what he's asking. He says, uh, I've I, I got a call on, my, on your life. I've, I've got a purpose for your life. I, I have some significance, uh, significant things I want to accomplish, and you're part of the plan, son. Son, you're part of the plan. Come on. This is what I want you to do. I want you to take a step of faith. I want you to trust me. Abraham went witnessing. He went walking into, into not knowing. He went waiting on God. He was waiting on a child of promise. He was waiting on the land. When he got there, there were Canaanites in, in the land, and that was his land, and, and he went waiting. And uh, I don't know about you, but waiting is not one of my, my, uh, my, my uh, great, great traits, but he went waiting and trusting, patiently waiting on God. He went worshiping. In verse 8, Abram built an altar, and he worshiped there. The most fa important fact, however, in all of this is this. He went. He went. Some people have great ideas and great visions and great dreams and they can paint an incredible panacolor vision, all of the dream they have and the incredible things that can transpire and what they have intended and they're dreamers because they never take action. But some people are faithers. They're faithers. 
They decide, you know what? I'm going to trust. I'm going to try. I'm going to step. I'm going to dare. I may fall flat on my face, but you know, God, if if you're in this, it's going to happen. And there they go. And they see great things from God. There's a story that I've always... It's always challenged me and blessed me. Don't you, don't you love some of the New Testament stories when Jesus just showed up? Don't you love some of those? Uh, Jesus has uh, fed the 5,000. The disciples have departed on the Sea of Galilee. Jesus is on a mountain praying. Storm blows in. Uh, they don't know what, what in the world's going on, what in the world is happening next. Uh, the waves get bigger. Uh, the boat gets, begins to get swamped. Uh, all of the disciples are saying, we're going to die, we're going to die, we're going to die, we're going to die. Okay? When all of a sudden they see Jesus on the mountain, the rest of the story, on the mountain Jesus sees and he knows. And so he starts walking on the water to get there. Pretty stinking awesome so far, don't you think? Uh, I think that's stinking awesome, man. And so Jesus is walking on the water to get there. And all of them think it's a ghost. Every one of them thinks it's a ghost. And then he gets a little closer and they say, well, it's Jesus. It's Jesus. All of them were terrified. All of them saw a ghost. Then all of them saw Jesus. And one of them said, Peter said, Jesus, if that's you, bid me come to thee. That's King Jim for. Hey, that looks pretty cool. Can I do that too? And Jesus says, Come on. And Peter walks on the water. And the waves are still big and he takes his eyes off Jesus and starts to sink and Jesus has to save him, pull him up. And everybody wants to talk about, oh, you know, that Peter, he's taking his eyes off Jesus. What about those 11 cowards in the boat? They didn't take a step. Peter, at least for a moment, knew this. I'm walking on water. Take a step. The things you'll cherish, the things you'll remember and value, the things you'll reminisce on, the things that will hold significance in your life are the moments you took a step. Faith begins, faith begins this way. We receive a call from God, but it demands this, a step of faith. And it sees the provision of God. Now, in verses 9 through 20, we see a a challenge on that journey. The the reality is when you start walking by faith and start stepping out into into the unknown, this is what happens. There are some challenges along the way. In in verses 9 through 20, uh, there came a famine in the land. Uh, Abram decided they would go to Egypt and they would be saved there. And uh, he gets there, he gets there, he tells his wife, uh, you tell everybody you're my sister, you're such a good looking lady, they'll just take you and... uh, and he lies. There are surprises along the journey here in verses 9 through 20. Uh, Abraham goes, Abram goes, he, he goes to a land that he does not know that God has told him. And when he gets there, there's a famine there. He didn't expect that. When he gets there, he finds Canaanites there. God said, this is your land. He gets there and it's populated. There are some surprises on the journey Anytime you take a step of faith, there are going to be some surprises on the journey. Abraham was tested by the surprises on the journey. He's 75, Sarah's 65. We're going to have a baby. They set out. He's tested by that challenge, but he's tested by several other challenges. He leaves everything that he knows to step into the unknown, and that's not a simple thing. I went to seven schools before I graduated high school. Seven schools. Have you ever been the new kid in school? It's fun. It's fun. You ever stepped into things you just didn't know? You didn't know the order. You didn't know what was going on. And he stepped into his unknown. Becky and I, when we went to seminary, I just felt like I needed to go to Fort Worth. We didn't know anybody in Texas. We didn't know anybody. 
the state of Texas, let alone in Fort Worth. And so we moved to Fort Worth. I went, went some, we went and moved someplace we could afford to live. That means we lived in the inner city. Um, in fact, we lived in the highest crime district in the Metroplex area, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. That's where we lived. Had some great neighbors. <coughs> had a, a house of uh, ill repute across the street from us. We had some other neighbors as well, but we had some great neighbors, great moments, and, and I'm down there in a rock because it, when it fit my schedule, I would take Josh at 4 a.m. down to the park and we would go to the park and swing because that's when I was off work and when I could spend time with my son. Not too smart. Have you ever stepped into some unknown things? He's tested by the unknown. There are going to be surprises along the journey. In your journey of faith, when you step out, there are going to be some things that surprise you. They're tests, challenges to take to the Father in prayer. What are you praying about today? What are you taking to the Father? There was fear on the journey. Abraham followed God. He pitched his tent toward Bethel. Bethel, translated, means house of God. He pitched his tent toward the house of God. He worshiped at the house of God. But he was, pitched his tent between Bethel and Ai. Ai, translated, means house of ruins. He pitched his tent between the house of God and the house of ruins, and pretty soon he started moving toward the house of of ruins and the more he moved toward the house of ruins the greater the trouble would loom on the horizon there came a famine upon the land uh, and rather than go into the house of God and trusting God to provide and trusting God to make a way for Abram this is what Abram did he said hey Sarah let's go down to Egypt I think it's a great idea we'll go down to Egypt they have food there and we will not perish from this famine. He comes to Egypt, they're getting to the edge of town, and he says, hey, uh, Sarah, you are such a fine-looking lady. You are such a fine-looking lady. I know this. Somebody's going to take you and kill me. You just tell them you're my sister when we get there. Ooh. Can you imagine that? I think one of the miracles in Abraham's life was that his wife ever spoke to him again. Don't you think that's a miracle? The problem was he was trusting his human abilities and not the supernatural move of God. It's easy to trust what we can manufacture, what favor we can call in, what we can organize and orchestrate, and how we can line things out so things work. The problem is that's not trusting God. And we always get what we can accomplish, not what God can do and work in our lives. There's going to be some fear on the journey. And if you let fear do it, fear will steal your faith. There are challenges on the journey. There'll be some surprises along the way. There are tests. Will you take it to God in prayer? There's going to be some fear on the journey. Will you compromise? There's going to be some compromise on that journey. The fears caused Abraham to lie and tell a half-truth. His, his Sarah was his half-sister, but a half-truth is a whole lie. You know that, right? A half-truth is a whole lie, and he told a lie, and the very thing that he was trying to avoid happened. Pharaoh took Sarah into his harem, and uh, compromise cost him. It cost him dearly. The opportunity to walk by faith is incredible. It is an incredible gift. It is an incredible challenge. But we are pulled, if we are not careful, into compromise. And every time we compromise, we will live with regret. 
the time I compromised and tried to do things in my own strength rather than just wait on God are always things I regret. We see the consequences of failure here. Sarah is taken from him. He loses all respect he had ever gained in her eyes. I don't know how he ever regained any respect in his wife's eyes. He lost all self-respect in his own eyes. I don't know a man who would be proud of himself for taking that kind of action. I don't know a man who would put his wife in front of him and say, you go in there and you risk everything so maybe I can not be hurt. I don't know a man like that. Do you? And he lost all self-respect. And he lost his testimony before Pharaoh. Now Pharaoh was afflicted with some kind of plague. And, and God spoke to him very, very clearly. And, and he gave Sarah back to Abram. And he says, what are you doing, man? Why didn't you tell me this was your wife? And, and, and he lost his testimony. He could have gone in there and, and been trusting God and seen the miraculous provision of God. But the reality was he, he lied to Pharaoh and did all kinds of things. And, and, and I think at the end of this, Pharaoh saying, man, if this is what God followers are like, I don't want to meet too many of them. And Abraham lost his testimony. There's some challenges on the journey. But faith always has an opportunity to return. Look at chapter 13 with me for just a moment. Look at verse 1. Chapter 13, verse 1. So Abram went up from Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and lot with him into the Negev. Now, Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver and in gold, and he journeyed on from the Negev as far as Bethel to the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Ai, to the place where he had made an altar at the first, and there Abram called upon the name of the Lord. Faith. It begins with the call of God. It demands a step of obedience. There are going to be some challenges that meet you on that faith journey. And when those challenges cause you to compromise, run to the place of restoration. Run to the place of renewal. It will demand a couple of things, and we see that here in verses 1 through 4 of chapter 13. The first thing it's going to demand is some separation. Abram had to leave Egypt with all his household and return to Bethel. He had to go back to the house of God. And there was a forsaking of this world and a clinging to the other world. There was a forsaking of this world and a clinging to God's world that had to take place. And it and demanded a moment's separation in his life. When you answer the call to God, it means that you're going to be separate from some things in this world and separated to God in the other. That's not a popular statement in our world today. We don't want to talk about being separate. But can I tell you, it's critical in your walk with God. If, if your besetting sin, if your besetting stumbling block is alcohol, this is what's got to happen. If alcohol ravages your life and steals your life and destroys your world, this is what's got to happen. You've got to not go to places where they serve alcohol. You've got to find some new buddies to hang out with who don't hit the cooler. Because... Alcohol is going to suck you in and it's going to steal your life. And there's a separation that has to come. Anger, I, I, I can get too angry too quick and I've got to run away from that. And, and I'm learning some things I've got to do if that's going to happen. Number one, in the, in the environment I live in today, I have got to seriously limit my news exposure. I just got to serious limit it. I, I, I got I to gotta understand what the, is in the world as a responsible citizen. I've got to understand that. I've got to do that. I'm going to do that. But I'm going to do that on the fly. Because if I camp out there, if I look at the next article and the next article and the next article, whew, it's, 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 it's displeasing to God. It's sin before God. Reading news, hearing news is sin before God. 
Yeah, if it's feeding your anger. Yeah, yeah, it's rebellion before God. You need to repent. I, I can't hang out with anybody who feeds my anger. Do you know some people, when, when, when they're around you, they, they kind of start feeding that frustration, that irritation in your spirit. I, I can't do that. I got to hang out with people who point me to Jesus, who are in love with Jesus, who continually bring me to another place, who pull me up short when I need it. Because I've got to separate from some of those things. If I'm, if I'm going to be on a faith journey, there, there's a separation involved and then there's a, there's, a, there's a call to worship involved. There's got to be a fresh encounter with God. This is what Abraham did. He went back to Bethel. He went back to the house of God. There he sacrificed to God. And there he worshiped God. And everything was different. Can I tell you on your faith journey, if you, if you spend moments in worship, it is a powerful thing. It's powerful. Oh, Paul, I'm not much of a music guy. Who said worship was only music? It's an incredible element of worship. But there are all manners and expressions of worship. Read the Word of God. Come across a verse of Scripture that speaks to you, that just leaps off the page and jumps in your spirit. And camp out there and meditate on that and reflect on that. And you'll encounter God. And you'll have a worship moment with God in word. Listen to people's testimony of how God has worked in their lives. Listen to the good things God has done in their heart and their life. And you'll marvel and wonder at the goodness of God. And you'll have a worship moment around testimony. And crank some praise and worship music in your life. And you'll get translated to a place that will bring freshness to your soul. Because what's going to matter in our lives? What's going to be significant in our lives? What are we going to remember? Are you going to remember a play you made in high school football? Is that going to be something when you're 75 years of old, you look back and say, you know, when I was 17. Is that it? That's not going to be it. What are you going to value? Your faith steps. Your faith steps. So I invite you to a journey. We're going to take a journey of faith with the Father of the faith. And that journey begins with a call from God and a step of obedience. We're going to 